Hello and welcome to the final video in my little series about setting up a cookie consent bar together with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4. So this final video will be all about Google Consent Mode and how to properly set it up to be used with Google Analytics 4. So let's now first have a quick look and recapture what we've done so far and then I'll show you how to set up Consent Mode. Okay, so what we've done so far was basically the old way of configuring Google Analytics via Google Tag Manager. It's pretty simple as you've seen. We just have to set a few variables. Problem is, if a user opts out, we will never know about it. And with this new consent mode, which I already hinted at, you also see down here there's some consent initialization. With this consent mode, Google will try to fill the gap we get by not capturing the users the old way. So there will be some models applied. If you have enough data, they can fill in some of the gaps for the users, even without cookies. So there are a few changes to make. Actually, we also don't need this variable anymore if we use consent mode, but we can keep it for now. One thing you have to do is you have to activate consent mode in case it isn't activated yet. So one thing that's helpful is go to the admin page and under container settings, enable the consent overview. Once you save it and you go back to your workspace and to your tags, you will have this icon here. And if you click on it, you get an overview of all the consent settings. And you see that the GA4 tag actually has some built-in consent already. So you don't need to configure anything. There are two consent settings, add storage and analytics storage. You should remember this string here because we're going to use it. Now, if we go to the settings here, I already hinted at that. Down at the end of the GA4 tech configuration, there was this consent settings and we have the built-in consent checks and currently we have set it to not set. We go to no additional consent required. This means we just require consent for those two or one of those two. Actually, we need consent for this one if we run the tag now. You could also add additional consent that's required, but for now it's just this. If you also have some conversion analytics for your ads, then you might also need this here. But for simple analytics, it's enough to just have this analytics storage. Important thing to note here, you switch to this setting here. And with it, you activate the consent mode for GA4. Now you save it. And if we now run everything as before, we still have the exact same behavior. But what we need to do, we need to change our trigger now. So we don't want to have a trigger depending on the GA4 active anymore. We now want to always trigger Google Analytics when this consent setting was applied by the user, independent of if it's true or false. We'll handle this now differently via the consent mode. So let's just keep this trigger, although we don't need it, and rather create a new one. And we call this consent configured event. So just like our custom event will again be a custom event and it will just be the consent configured event. We don't need to have any conditions here for this one. Now we go back to the tags and change the trigger here. So we remove this trigger and instead we now add our consent configured event. We save it. And now what happens if we preview, Google Analytics will always be triggered once the consent is configured. Let's now check this. Let's first remove all the cookies here, refresh the page, and now we're here with the banner. Now looking at the assistant, what you see here, currently it's not yet fired, but it will be fired as soon as I click accept, or even if I click submit now without with this cookie set to false. So let's submit it like this. Do you see directly we have the Google Analytics cookies? Reason is simple. The consent configured event was fired and that's the only condition for the GA4 tag now. So how do we now remedy this? Because we have Google Analytics active set to false, but still the tag fired. And this is now where we need to apply some consent settings because default the ad storage and the analytics, which I showed you, those two consent settings are set to true. What we need to do now in our code, we need to set those to false as default. 
and you do this before you call your GTAG initialization. So we do it just here and the call we do is GTAG consent default at storage denied and also analytics storage denied. So this is how you find it in the documentation. Now let's see what happens if we have it like that. Just close this, we start the debugging. Now we see here this is false but again we have the cookies. So let's see why this happened. We set it as default denied so we shouldn't have the cookies. So what happened? Down here you see our consent configuration. We also have a tab here. We deny everything. Then the consent initialization takes over and suddenly it's granted and from hands on it's set to granted. A solution for it in addition to this GATAC consent default setting the way you change the consent afterwards is by GTAC consent update. And I found if you do both calls in the beginning, let's save this. Now close the page or stop the debugging, restart it. Now let's see what happens. So first consent is denied, then it's updated and denied. But you also see here an update was detected before it wasn't detected. And now we keep it like that. So also you don't see the constant initialization anymore because we did the update. And now it's correct. At storage, it's denied all the way up until here we launch the GA4 active. Consent is still denied. Now what does it mean? Have a look at the page. So we still have the cookies from before. So we should delete those and start fresh. So just refresh the page, configure cookies and deactivate Google Analytics. Now I submit. And you see now we just have the constant cookie. Now we go to the tags. We see that the GA4 tag fired, but because of our consent mode setting, where we set it to denied, we don't get any Google Analytics cookies. And that's exactly what we want. That's exactly what consent mode does. So you still have Google Analytics running, but since it's running in consent mode, it will only create cookies if consent is granted. Otherwise it will not store anything. Now let's see if it works if we grant it. Let's refresh this and now I go to accept and it doesn't. And the reason is simple because we don't update the consent. So let's go to our code and that's the last step. So here we have this consent update call. We also need to do this down here for the case that our GA4 cookie is true. So if consent cookie.ga4 active. If this is true, then we want to update the consent. And what we want to update is just the analytic storage and we want to set it to granted. And we can do the same down here. Let's save it. And surely we have some code duplication here. So typically you would rearrange everything a bit, make it cleaner, but we'll leave it like that. It's just about the mechanics here. In the beginning we denied it. And now if GA4 is set to active, then we grant it. Now let's see what happens. Let's look at the developer tools. So consent was true and now we have the GA for cookies. So let's just do this once more so you see that it actually works. Let's refresh. So no cookies at all yet. Now I accept and now you directly get the GA for cookies. And also if we look at the assistant, you see that here we have this consent update where you see suddenly it's granted and before both were denied. Then afterwards, when this event comes, GA4Tech is triggered this time with granted consent, which is why we now store cookies. So yeah, that's how you implement consent mode versus the old way. So both ways are similar in terms of effort before we used our own variable. What you could now do if you use consent mode, you can do some cleanup because now you no longer need this GA4 active event, so you can delete it. Then you also no longer need this variable here, you can also delete it. And now you have a very clean and very simple configuration of your Google Analytics with just one trigger with this event, with an update of the consent mode and one single tag that's tied to this event. So let's also clean up the code. Let's just remove this set, no longer need it. Let's remove this set. Only important thing to remember, you have to call both. So the default and the update. 
Okay, that's it for the little series on setting up a custom cookie consent bar with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. If you've made it through all three videos of the series, you should now be very comfortable with setting everything up and also have a solid foundation about using Google Tag Manager. So it doesn't have to end with using it to set up or integrate Google Analytics into your homepage. With this custom function, GTag, you now know how to send data and events to Google Tag Manager and also how to set those up in Google Tag Manager. So yeah, you can do a lot more and yeah, explore further ways to improve your homepage by using Google Tag Manager. So I hope you like this little series. If so, make sure to leave a thumbs up or subscribe for more. I try to always make very pragmatic videos where we work on real use cases or try to solve real problems. Okay, that's it for the video. See you hopefully in the next one. Bye bye.